Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, we've been catching some much needed rain here overnight. Caught about 500 gallons. I knew the rain was supposed to come and got this pool up just in time. Caught about 500 gallons in here last night. Looking good and more on the way tomorrow. And in the meantime, we've got a new battery to look at today from Watt Cycle. So here we have the new 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate from Watt Cycle. Haven't seen this brand before, but it looks like a pretty nice battery. Really a straightforward little package that it arrived in. Of course, it came with your M8 terminal bolts, which we already have hooked up, charging this battery to full for its first time. It arrived with a voltage of 13.1, which is about average on how these batteries will arrive to you. It also did come with this user manual that I would highly recommend everybody read from cover to cover. It has all the basic and pertinent information you'll need to get this thing up and running. And this weighs in at just over 45 pounds. And some of the most important features are the cycle life. You're gonna get 6,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. If you were driving this down to 100% depth of discharge, it's typically more around 4,000 cycles. And if you're charging it less, you can just add on to that 6,000. So if you're taking it down to no more than 50%, you could get up probably near 10,000 cycles on this, which is the equivalent of many more years. So depending how you do uh, discharge this and its application will, depend, uh, will determine some of the longevity of the battery, but right off the bat, an 80% depth of discharge uh, for 6,000 cycles, you're gonna get many, many years of uh, good use out of this battery. And because it does have the 200 amp BMS on board, it has a max charging capacity of 200 amps and a max discharge capacity of 200 amps. So that's pretty nice. You're gonna be able to do a lot with a battery this size and that size BMS. And just taking a quick look at their website, you can see that this battery is currently listed for $590, which is a pretty good price for a battery of this size. And uh, down in the description, you'll see a code for 10% uh, off through this channel. So that's gonna knock it down uh, closer to that $500 for 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which that's getting to be very reasonable. And this does come with a five-year warranty, so that's backed up with a pretty decent warranty as well. So one of the differences I noticed between this battery case and many of the others we see that have uh, the terminal attachment points as being flush on the top, you can see that this goes down about a finger width like this. So you're gonna have to get your cables coming in either from this direction or from this direction. You know, you're not gonna be able to lay your cables flat across like on some of them we've seen. That's not really a big issue for here, but you can see the way I had to, to snake these cables around to get them to go in. This one I had to come in around and from the side. Now, if I had this battery flipped around in the back, they would all be fine uh, just going in from you know, that position there. But so that's, that's the only real difference I see in this type of a case. We have had this hooked up to 500 watts of solar to bring it up from its 13.1 volts, how it arrived up to 100% full now. And we have told this battery monitor that this is a 200 amp hour battery and it is fully charged right now on this particular solar system, which is being driven by the uh, Victron MPPT 130. And you can see we're in absorption right now. It's full. Took it a couple of days to get to full and that's just only because of the charging conditions I was experiencing out here. Been a little cloudy, but it went right on up there today. So now we're gonna start uh, using it. So just to give you another little angle at how I had to get those cables on there. You know, a little bit different than those flush mounts, like I was saying, but uh, very easy to work around. And 
you know, depending on where you slip this in on your build, you'll be able to adjust that as needed. Like I said, I could just simply flip that around uh, towards the back and, and I wouldn't have had to snake those cables around. But for the system we tied it into, that's what I needed to do, but no problem there. And this battery does come with low temperature discharge protection. So for those of you in colder climates uh, where that's an issue, uh, you've got that built in here. That's not really an issue out here in the tropics. We don't get cold enough to ever activate the, the low temperature disconnect. And the only way for me to test that would be to bust this open. And I'm not going to do that at this time. We're going to simply just slip this right into operation now that we've got a full battery and make sure that it discharges all in good shape. I will just quickly show you on the Victron app what it looks like. Right now, like I said, I've got 500 watts of panels out there. It's only allowing 20 watts in there right now to hold this battery voltage at 14.2. And if you look at these last two bars here to the left, this is when we hooked it up yesterday and we pumped in 920 watt hours. And today, so far, it's taken 440 watt hours, as you can see. So, looks really, really good. All those previous values were from a different battery. And I went ahead and named uh, the charge controller for today's demonstration, watt cycle 200 amp hour, so I know at a glance what I'm looking at. But there we are, just sitting nice and comfortable in absorption right now. And, of course, I did tell my battery uh, monitor what 100% full was so it now knows that this is 100% full and then if I go down and show like there's only uh, 1.3 amps coming in at the moment and that we do have a full 200 amp hours of capacity now. So this is a real simple drop-in uh, replacement especially if you're running lead acid batteries and you guys are switching over to lithium iron phosphate which you know, so many of us are these days. Uh, you know, this was super, super easy. I just pulled one battery out, dropped this one in, tied it up, told, told my battery monitor what this battery was uh, capable of and its capacity and amp hour rating. And then of course we got Victron controlling it so we know we're in really, really good shape. Now it did come also with these terminal protectors got the positive, got the negative, so you can slip those on there. So yeah, that's what it came with. And like I said, I would highly recommend reading the book all the way through, but pretty basic battery and very, very well priced. So uh, good timing now that it's full. Uh, battery systems have been down a little bit, so we're going to tie this up immediately and start discharging it. Okay, so this is the system that we're gonna draw off of right here. We've got that 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and we've got a 20 cubic foot refrigerator freezer tied into there. And right at the moment, it's not pulling anything uh, because it hasn't cycled on. And when that cycles on, it's gonna uh, start drawing this battery down. We're getting to be late in the day here and we'll be able to see what it does. Just with that plugged in though, it opened up the wattage a little bit to hold it at absorption, still holding it at 14.2. And because there's a lack of sunshine right now, when that refrigerator does kick on, we should start seeing this go down. And because it's been very cloudy the past couple of days and we have been catching some much needed rain, I'm gonna also discharge it with uh, this charger here and on the number two position, and we'll see right now, it's actually pulling 238 watts off this battery. We can see from the monitor that we are drawing down now, and you can see that arrow. And if we go to here, we can see, you know, it's pulling 0.7 amps just pulled a tenth of an amp hour so far, but I just now switched it on. 
still showing 100% full. And there is still a little bit of sunshine coming in. And what we're using is we're using this charger here. And because we had a, a power station here, this is that Opus 1800 watt pure sine wave power station. It was down as we've been moving water around and jockeying all kinds of uh, power supply systems around. It was in need of a charge. It shows 187, 188 watts going into this. So already putting this baby right into production. Expected to do very well. And this is the refrigerator freezer we tied into it, which is full of food. Freezer's full, refrigerator's full. This is 20 cubic foot LG model. Only draws 50 to 80 watts, depending what the ambient temperature is and how often the door is being opened and closed throughout the day. So now we've got that watt cycle, keeping our food storage in perfect condition. So whether you're using this for some backup power or for some main power, or if it's just gonna be for recreation, looks like a good one here. I wanna thank the people at Watt Cycle for sending this out for a review. It looks to be a very worthy battery and guaranteed if I find anything wrong with it in this usage, I will let you guys know. I'm gonna come back and make a little short video of it and do a proper discharge test to make sure it does have the 200 amp hour uh, capacity. I'm not going to squeeze that into today's uh, test because we've got other things going on out here, but we're going to definitely uh, keep our eye on this. And like I said, you'll be the first to know if there's any problem, but everything I see right now, no problems working exactly what you want. It arrives, you charge it up, you drop it in, you start using it. Just how you want to be able to rely on it. Okay, there's the wattage. The refrigerator is cycling on right now, and because it's kind of a cool day, we're only sitting at about 76 degrees inside the house right now, so a uh, pretty mild day, so it's not drawn very high, but that's, that's normal. And then on the other position, 237 watts, so we'll call that 240. About 300 watts is all we're pulling off of this. No problem, starting to go down. As you can see, the sun is not uh, keeping up with the discharge. So that's, you know, that's just fine, end of the day. And like I said, we're gonna just keep working this baby out and we'll show you anything that ever goes wrong with it, but not anticipating anything. So just exactly what I like for a battery. It shows up, I charge it up, I drop it into action and it stays in action. So we'll be back and I will do a full capacity test on it when I've got some, uh, when I've got everything all charged up enough to do that. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in everybody as usual. I appreciate you guys a lot. And tomorrow what I'm gonna do with that battery is I'm gonna drop a sub pump into the water catchment system here. This is an auxiliary system. I have a bigger catchment system that was almost sucking air. And we're gonna use that watt cycle to start moving this water to a larger holding tank. There's probably over 500 gallons there and tomorrow it's supposed to rain all day. So I hope, I hope it's coming out of this fast enough. I can just let that pump run most of the day and top off that other tank. So. That's the plan, and we'll use that watt cycle to move that water. All the things you can do with lithium iron phosphate. Light enough to pick up and carry it around wherever you need it. Hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are. Aloha.